Well, let's talk about today. There is a new law going into effect in Georgia, and you are part of the reason why that's happening. Talk about your involvement in making today happen. You know, I, I hate to like take credit for, you know, obviously I sing, can't single-handedly create or make a law happen, but I definitely kind of fought and lobbied for it. Um, the law, you know, it has, has to do with the, the voting education and I met with um, senator, the senator that authored the bill, as well as his assistant, Carly, and my attorney helped me to uh, meet the right people to lobby to get it done. And when you talk about lobbying, what have you done, Tamika, over the past few months to make today a reality? Um, just basically writing, just kind of writing down the things that I thought would better, you know, suit swimmers and boaters and um, people that were operating personal watercrafts, um, meeting with senators, going to the Capitol a couple of times, and you know, just stating my concerns. What had you learned after July that made you feel like something's gotta be done? What were some of the issues maybe that you found, this doesn't happen or they're not doing this and our children are out there on the lake? What was it that made you think these things need to change? You know, I started looking at the statistics of just the amount of deaths over the years, or like the, the kind of trending of fatalities on the lake. And even after my son, you know, they're, you know, looking for this missing boater or this missing swimmer, or I just felt like there needed to be some changes because I felt like it was just a free for all. And there wasn't any rules that were really governing how people were um, operating on the lake. What do you know about what's going into effect today? What are the changes that you are happy to see happen? I'm, I'm happy to see that um, children 13 and under are gonna be required to wear life vests. Um, that was something that was very important to me. Um, there also, um, the, they've changed the, the distance that um, a personal watercraft should be from a, a swimmer. Well, and there's more things that mm -hmm. Ms. Raymond's been advocating for, and that's just making sure that, you know, these crimes don't go unpunished. Her lobbying efforts started with meeting with the district attorney in Hall County, going to Hall County because the DA wanted to meet with her, talking to the DA about how this affected her life, but looking at, you know, making this a stiffer penalty. Right now, it's only three years in jail for someone to commit this sort of crime. Um, Ms. Raymond's been uh, obviously out there trying to push that to five years. That didn't happen in this bill, but we, we look forward to seeing that happen next next session. Were there things, Tamika, that you learned after Kyle's death that sort of, did it outrage you? Did it make you angry? Were you shocked when you learned about maybe the current laws or lack of current laws? Yes. Um, it, it's very disturbing to me that the laws when you're operating a vehicle, a motor vehicle, um, are much stiffer, the penalties and the, um, you know, the repercussions of, of operating a motor vehicle are much different than the waterways. Waterways, you kind of can have a free-for-all. You don't have to have proper training. You don't have to have a license. You can drink, you can party, you know, you can be neglectful. All these things can happen on water, but if we were on land, these people would be behind bars. So I, um, I'm hoping that, you know, this makes a lot of those changes go into effect. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, there was no alcohol involved. There was. There was. Actually, um, and, and that, was, that was part of it. You know, one of the things that we've been advocating for is to try to get to level it out. The, the governor made it clear, if you can't drive a car drunk, you should not be able to drive a boat uh, the same way. There was some alcohol involved, not a lot. That did not meet the levels that make it illegal, but there was some alcohol involved. But the biggest issue is the training. Uh, what Ms. Raymond has been advocating for is that you have to have some testing and to see that people understand the rules. Now, the person involved in this particular case took the class twice, but they never took a test on their competency. So we don't know if the class was effective. They didn't show that he had any competency, and this, re this injury resulted because obviously he's never been on a jet ski before and didn't know how to operate it. And if you have to have a license to drive a car and get in a car to make sure you can drive it, you should probably have that same sort of understanding of a jet ski. Jet skis don't have brakes. Kyle and the little girl, they were on a tube, is that right? Sort of like the inflatable inner tube thing? Yes, yeah, an inflatable inner tube. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do we know how far they were from the shore that day? Do you have any idea about that? You know, I don't know. Well, it wasn't a, 
But the concern <coughs> is the jet ski and the operator of the jet ski came too close to the inner tube. That is, that is a serious problem. The, the law allows 100 yards, 100, 100 feet, I'm sorry. And this person clearly was purposely going too close. The problem I think Ms. Raymond had is that you, the DNR agents watched this. There were DNR agents that witnessed this happen. And from the DNR agent's perspective, they couldn't tell whether or not the jet ski was within 100 feet or not. Well, what Ms. Raymond's proposing, if you made that, you couldn't be within 200 feet, it would have been clearer for that DNR agent to sell from a distance that this person was violating the law and they may have been able to get there in time. Do you know if there were lifeguards around that day? No, they're, they're not in the open water, but you do have DNR agents. And there's not a lot of them. So it is very rare to have a DNR agent witness something like this. And so the, 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 what she's been advocating for is just what could have helped those DNR agents respond quicker so this didn't happen to anyone else. Do you know if Jeff Hubbard ever took a blood alcohol test or anything that day? It was not anywhere near the legal limit, gotcha. but he did test positive for having alcohol that day. My son's father and, and his friends and family, you know, went to the lake to celebrate or have a good time. Just, you know, just probably just to relax and mm -hmm. take some time off. And uh, my son was very, like, um, kind of anti-athletics. <laughs> so he did not, um, he wasn't one to do a lot of rigorous sports and things like that. He was super artistic. So I, he was having a good time, I believe. And... Um, it's just that, you know, this guy was just very negligent, very careless, very reckless. And um, the thing is, is that when you're, if you're operating something that has so much power and so much speed, it doesn't have brakes. So I think proper training is necessary to tell a person how do you, you know, you divert, you know, from an accident or how do you, you know, abort or I don't know, you know, pull the key or something to make it stop. Why do you think helmets would help? Um, my son's injury was a TBI, a traumatic brain injury. Had he been required to wear some sort of protective water gear, a helmet, it would have um, lessened the impact that he sustained. I just think that helmets would, would just be helpful, just like you're riding a bike. It's the same, you know, I just want the laws on land to be the same on water. I think that, I think they should just be a little more comparable. Yeah. There's, if you rent a car, at the airport, you're given an option to buy insurance so you can have your own. Currently, most people's auto insurance does not cover watercraft. Uh, Ms. Raymond was advocating to Senator Miller and to the, the committee, we need to have an option for people to buy insurance when they rent a car. Because right now, nobody's covered. So these accidents, or, or rent a jet ski. When these accidents happen, families just have to get together and figure out how to pay for it themselves. There's no safety net. And we think that that has to be a critical part of next session's legislation is making sure that you don't have to make it mandatory, but at least give people the option to purchase insurance to protect their families. I think that there should be some zoning. I feel like we're, we're dealing with a lake that's, you know, 40 miles, from what I understand, is 40 miles what, in circumference or long? No, it's or about 40, over 45 miles long. 45 miles long. I, I feel as though if they had just areas you know, if you're a swimmer, you know, you're kind of in this area. If you're doing a jet, uh, you know, a personal watercraft that goes over 30 miles per hour, you're in this area. If you're on just a sail, a rowboat, you're in this, you know what I mean? I feel like there was zoning. Everybody wouldn't, you know, be in the same paths of one another. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's zipping across each other. You're swimming, there's a boat going across you, you know, and I think that would have been helpful in the, um, the Prince situation as well. Everybody's, you know, doing different things in the water and it's all in one concentrated area. Yeah. So I think your description of saying kind of a free for all, you know, right. really does sum it up and you get that visual image of just people kind of everywhere, especially on a holiday. Wow. I had never been to the lake prior to the signing of the bill, but I've heard, you know, about how it is. Mm -hmm. When do you think at some point you went from um, just being concerned about what happened to Kyle to being concerned about saving others and making sure that this doesn't happen to someone else. Literally in the hospital. I, um, you know, I was like in the hospital, you know, his father and I were saying there are some changes that have to be made. And, you know, I, you know, have to give credit to his father as well as our mayor. Um, I feel like everybody was integral in, in getting this done. Um, 
you know, from, I just think everybody kind of, you know, wished for this to happen and everyone came together and made sure that it happened. It was an unfortunate incident, but certainly eye-opening for everyone who had, you, I think it's the kind of thing you don't think about. You don't think that that is going to happen. And I think what Ms. Raymond is saying as well is that this is important. Uh, this hits home for everybody. Very rarely do you see a bill pass this quickly. Um, the governor, our governor, took it very seriously. Took it very emotionally at the at the bill signing. He did. Uh, Senator Butch Miller of of Hall County took it very seriously. Pushed it through committee and on the Senate side. So the state responded quickly and it had overwhelming support in both houses of the legislature. So we see that this is an important issue, but we still have some steps to go for further to make sure that it doesn't happen again. This was a good start, but I think Ms. Raymond is still gonna be active. She's still gonna be out there pushing these folks to do what's right and to continue to make uh, the necessary changes to make the lake safer in this state. So your advocating will continue and then you've also started a foundation in Kyle's honor. I did. Which is about um, what? I had started Kyle's World Foundation. Um, I had to do something that would, um, I feel, keep his memory alive. And, and it's also very therapeutic for me because I'm able to talk about him so much and I'm able to um, work toward helping other children that are underprivileged or may not have access to the arts. So Kyle was a consummate artist. He loved to sing, he loved to make music, he loved to dance, and he was a great actor and a computer whiz. So I would like to introduce those different areas to children that may not have, you know, the same access that Kyle did, and it's called Kyle's World. You haven't had any events yet? You're talking about maybe? We had a launch event at the Woodruff Arts Center that was on Kyle's birthday, <coughs> excuse me, um, on March 29th. But we are doing our first fundraiser, and that's May 30th um, in Roswell. And what's the website? The website is kylesworldfoundation.org. Yeah. And so. you're thinking about maybe even doing summer camps. I mean, something to get well, these kids. Well, the, the, we're, we're raising funds for the summer camp, which would be the one-year anniversary of his passing in July. So our first camp, that's my goal, is to you know raise money to do the camp in July. But the eventual goal is to open a charter school for performing arts. You've described Kyle as your soulmate. <clears throat> oh, my soulmate. My mini-me. As, you know, as much as you could parallel, <laughs> imagine a boy being a girl version of his mom. I, I don't know. We were very, very much alike, um, both very artistic, both super goofy. You know, we both had um, the acting bug at a young age. I, I started as Hamlet when I was the same age that Kyle did uh, the Scarecrow and the Wiz, and Kyle did it for a couple of years in a row. Um, he was very, very talented. You know, very talented. So you want to sort of keep that memory alive of him and, and help other children sort of fulfill that dream that they may have in them. Well, I'm hoping to encourage or at least plant a seed. You know, there, there's children that may have this talent but be diamonds in the rough and not realize that they do have it. I want to support and encourage the talent um, and hopefully bring it out. And, you know, some, some children just need that push and that encouragement and exposure, just access. Yeah, so that's what I would like to do. Mm -hmm. Kyle was the next Steve Jobs. He was. He really was. <laughs> he was, he said it, and he was. You said earlier that it hasn't even been a year. Not even a year yet. No. Maybe about 10 months, maybe. About Nine months. months. Mm -hmm. How have these past few months been for you? You know, they've been a roller coaster of emotions. I, I do a lot of um, self I don't know, I guess I'd say I kind of self, I get myself together on my own. I, you know, I, I sit with myself, I think a lot, I look at his pictures a lot, I have conversations with him. That's something a year ago, I would have said someone was crazy for doing. <laughs> and um, I have conversations with him and I, I, you know, a lot of prayer and things that keep me strong. But I will say that this foundation effort and some of the other things that I'm working on in his honor are definitely helpful you know, in the grieving process, and they're helping me not to uh, just ball up and fade away. <laughs> he was your middle child, right? He was two a middle. Younger, two yeah, older. yeah. I have two. I had two middle children. Um, uh, his brother Ryan and himself, and then also Usher is, is a younger brother, but they're all in the middle. Okay. 
Yeah, but he was, um, I'd say, the most connected in, in um, I don't know, we were just very, con like a soulmate. That's the best way I can describe it. Just my best little BFF. Yeah. And you carry his cell phone. I keep his cell phone. I got him an iPhone <laughs> um, because he, he, you know, had good grades and he graduated um, that, he graduated in May. And I'd gotten him a cell phone. He had just gotten it in June. And um, the accident happened in July. So I keep it with him. I keep his glasses. There's just little things that I just keep with me every day. Because he had just finished fifth grade. He had just finished fifth grade. And um, um, he was so excited about starting middle school and the prospect of wearing regular clothes, no uniform, finally. So um, I'm doing a clothing line that's kind of um, inspired by his style and stuff that he likes. Yeah, so I'm excited. Okay, a lot of irons in the fire. I have a lot of irons in the fire. All my life has been repurposed. That's definite. After losing oh, it, child. Yeah, this is just a complete, like, you know, everything that I thought was important um, kind of fell by the wayside, you know what I mean? And so I've repurposed my life. I mean, I have other children, and that's obviously they're my focus. They always have been. But <clears throat> in terms of business and, like, personal goals and, and things like that, I've kind of taken a new direction and um, found something that means more than what I thought was important before. Like you said, therapeutic. It's therapeutic, it is. Right. It's sanity, <laughs> it's sanity, yeah. And I know you were apprehensive about talking about that phone call. I mean, it was, yeah, because it, it's all blurry still. It's still a little blurry, um, and still a lot that I don't know. You know. I still have a lot of unanswered questions, so, yeah. What do you think has been, not just Kyle, but what do you think has been your motivation to keep going, you know, every day to get up and get Tamika going? My other children. Yeah, my other children, because I mean, it's not, it would not be fair for them, for me to just, you know, ball up and wither away. I'm still their mom. And I, I have a, a, I've been armed with a job. I have a, a you know, a complete job where I have to let them know how important their brother was and that you know his passing will not be in vain. Um, it's important for me to get the awareness out about water safety. I, I, wanna, I would like to take this nationwide. I think that this is a problem. I, I, just, I just got a letter <laughs> last week about two boys that drowned in Mississippi. Um, personal watercraft, the same scenario, two boys. And they, you know, they, I guess their funeral is probably this week. It is important to me to advocate water safety and to make sure that this doesn't happen. This needs to stop happening. To, there's no, a mother's not supposed to bury their child. It is just not, um, I, just, I just don't think that that's the, the, the way the circle of life is supposed to go. And it, if it's preventable, which I believe it is, if it's, you know, proper education and, um, preventive measures are taken, I think that we can, you know, slow this down, if not stop it. While I was in the hospital, I, I did a lot of research. I just, I literally had my laptop because I didn't leave for 15 days. So I literally, night and day, because I never slept <laughs> ever or ate, I did a lot of research on the lake because I needed to know more, like, you know, why this happened, how this happened. And that's when I found out about the Prince children, Jake and Griffin. I mean, it was two weeks prior to my son's accident. You know, had I known, you know, I'm sure, and had his father known, he probably wouldn't have even, you know, taken him there. But I knew then, I was like, something has to be done. We are moms that are burying children. This, how, how is this so? And such um, children with such potential. You know, my son was um, probably one of the most angelic people. I mean, and when I say it, I know it sounds super cliche excuse me but he was angelic he was angelic he was angelic he was he was angelic he was so just mild mannered and obedient and kind he was just angelic i'm sorry excuse sorry. me take time out. just one second because i'm gonna smear everything
Yeah, he was really, really, I mean, out of every child that I've met in my life, I've never met a child so obedient and so easygoing. He went with the flow. He's like, all right, mom, everything was okay. Kyle, clean your room. Okay, mom. Kyle, can you put the car seats in the car? Sure, okay, mom. I mean, always respectful, always obedient with everything that he was asked to do. Just such a respectful child. And it bothers me that, I mean, clearly, it hurts me to have lost a child so, just, it just didn't make any sense, senseless. It was a senseless, senseless, senseless loss of life. It really, it's different. He wasn't operating the, the watercraft. He was just enjoying, probably looking at the sun. And then he just gets, you know, hit by a, a, a wild motorist, you know? I feel like it just was, um, I think that this law will definitely help in, in the distance that they're required and hopefully DNR will be a lot more responsive and a lot more on point about this as a result of my son. It was a sacrifice. Yeah.